Uh, yeah, uh, hello and thank you. My name is Lori Domani. I'm a PhD student from Tree University, and this contribution has been done in collaboration with my supervisor Ralf Schenkel, and we participated in task one, that is conversational argument, uh, argument retrieval. Our ranking bases on a probabilistic framework. Uh, first, I will explain the intuition behind it using an example. Uh, roughly speaking, this framework comprises two components. That is, uh, on the one hand, claim similarity, and on the other hand, argument quality. And after defining them, we will explain estimators for these components. OK. As you might know, the provided corpus consists of claim premise pairs. The claim is central and usually a controversial point of view, which should not be accepted by the reader immediately. Um, this acceptance is typically increased or decreased only with the help of more information, that is, by premises. So now, if we want to find the best premises for a query, we have to consider both the premises and the claims. And our idea is to approach this with two distinct stages. Um, in the first step, we want to find the most similar claims to the query, following the intuition that the more similar a claim is to the query, the more relevant are the claims premises to the query. We, we can define this as conditional probability. And in the second step, we consider only those premises with claims similar to the query. In other words, they are above a certain threshold. Now, uh, let delta be argument quality aspects or dimensions that are of interest to the user. We define the probability that the user picks a premise P from a claim C among all its premises, preferring those that are of high quality in all argument quality dimensions in delta, as here shown. And uh, combining the two components, we get the probability that the user picks a premise for the query with regard to the argument quality dimensions. And uh, since we want to show a user a premise with the same meaning only once, we cluster similar premises. And this clustering also increases the relevance of the cluster by summation. Uh, please note that while we only sketched the framework here, you will find detailed descriptions in the paper for example, there you can read the explanation of clustering of premises by their meaning, which I unfortunately have to skip due to uh, time restrictions. Okay. Uh, now uh, we have the two components uh, representing claim retrieval and premise ranking and need to find suitable estimators for them. Okay, uh, to find the most similar claims to a query, we use standard text retrieval methods, uh, namely divergence from randomness. As our preliminary study here produced the most promising results for this task, but note that uh, DFR uh, was not significantly, significantly better than BM25. So we could also use this instead. And for the ranking of premises, we do not trust text retrieval methods as a convincing premise does not need to have any textual overlap to the query. Thus, we use classifiers which estimate different argument quality dimensions. The idea behind this is that some premises can be logically conclusive, but may not evoke the, the reader's emotions and vice versa. And we aim to aggregate these qualities in order to, to rank the premises. Now, um, let D, uh, small d, be a single argument quality dimension. Now, for each premise, we can calculate the dimension convincing frequency, DCF. For this, we simply count how many times a classifier returned for a premise that it was more convincing than all other premises with the same claim with regard to, to this specific dimension D. And we can express this as a probability. And to extend this towards multiple dimensions, we can simply multiply the per dimension probabilities, which lead to the following equation. OK, uh, we briefly address the dimensions we consider as well as their calculations. These are the logical quality in terms of the cogency or strength of an argument the dialectical quality in terms of the reasonableness of argumentation for resolving issues and 
the uh, rhetorical quality in terms of the persuasive effect of an argument, which is called effectiveness. Okay, uh, to train classifiers for predicting argument quality, we work with a data set, Darkstuhl Arc Quality Corpus. It consists of 32 issue stance pairs with 10 premises each and labels between one and three. And in order to work with more data, we transform the data set to premise one, premise two pairs with labels A and B instead of final ratings. And then learn which argument, the first or second, is better with regard to a specific dimension. Uh, in the figure, with regard to cogency, premise one with label three is better than premise two and three with labels two and one. And uh, here we discarded pairs with equal values. Uh, for example, uh, we, we have no label, we have here no labels for the dimension reasonableness in this example, as all values uh, are two. Uh, here you can see an example from this data set. Uh, it comprises two premises towards the same issue. Is the school uniform a good or bad idea and the stands bad? The values in the second example are higher for each dimension, mirroring that it is also more convincing for the three dimensions. Probably the sentence, uh, kids will find other reasons to bully others increases the effectiveness while the sentence, it also infringes upon their basic rights to be individuals and to express their individuality increases the cogency, probably. And now, um, to represent both the premises and the topic, we first calculated the embeddings by applying sentence bird. And now given the three embeddings, we then calculate the sum, the difference and the product of each dimension of the two premises um, to the topic pointwise before concatenate, concatenating the two premise vectors, which is the input to the classifier. And yeah, since we have uh, 32 issue stance pairs, we evaluated the process with uh, leaf one out cross validation and we measured the performance of seven standard classifiers. Of these, uh, Random Forest delivered the best performance for cogency and effectiveness. Logistic regression achieved the best performance for reasonableness and the two case HSD tests showed no significant differences between the two for the three dimensions, but to the other uh, classifiers. And uh, yeah, that's it. Of course, you will find more descriptions in the paper and uh, thank you for your kind attention. <laughs>